What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Going to be presenting the Full Grip League Tournament for you all tonight. We've got an exciting matchup here, round one. We've got Jesse Parker on the left versus Full Grip's very own Sean Lydon on the right. Thank you so much for the generosity chat. We've got Zach Pra and Reggie Rocks the Mall. Zach with 100 bits, Reggie Rocks with 500 bits. Thank you guys so much. Exciting matchup for you all. We've got Jesse Parker with a Lapras GX Silvalli GX deck. So a Lapras Silvalli deck apparently was a deck piloted uh, one of these latest weekends, and uh, I think by Rahul, ready? So pretty cool deck we've got to display. And then Sean has got Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX. And thank you so much, Reggie Rocks, for that Twitch Prime sub as well. Six months on board. Hopefully you get to enjoy that new sub badge. You've got by your name now, and feels good to be back. So thank you guys all for the viewership and the patience as I took that little weekend getaway vacation to Baltimore. Got to visit my family and see some old friends. Also getting to see one of my favorite bands, Beach House, in concert. It was an absolutely incredible experience. Definitely a memorable one. So really nice weekend uh, that I had this past uh, weekend and definitely relaxing. So feeling ready to go heading into the week here and uh, should be a lot of fun. Let's see. Jesse Parker's got Nest Ball and a Meowth as his starter. So we might see a Persian GX in the deck. And I'm going to head on over to PokemonCards.com. Make sure that I have the cards that I need in order to commentate this game here. Lapras GX, not a card that we have seen on the competitive side of play for a long time. We uh, have not seen Lapras GX since early Sun and Moon format, really. And then Decidueye came into the format early on and kind of kicked Lapras GX right on out. It was a tanky deck at first in early Sun and Moon format. Lapras GX, you would start by using Lapras's Collect in order to draw three cards until you had enough cards in your hand. It even was played at the same time as Night March. That's kind of odd to think, but Lapras GX uh, in the first Sun and Moon, in Sun and Moon base set, right, was played at the same time as Night March when it first came out, but had a bad Night March matchup because Night March could actually hit that one-hit KO number that it needed to in order to take it out. So Lapras Stall Dex was kind of short-lived. Thank you so much, Fat Random, for the Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate the viewership. Thank you so much. We've got a Volcanian Prism Star on Jesse's bench over here, and he's going to use the Jet Geyser to just discard a Water Energy, and it looks like he's kind of thinking about it, maybe or asking whether or not that's uh, an option available to him. And thank you so much. Is that Chris Neely? Thank you, Chris Neely, for the Twitch Prime sub. So appreciate it. And Jesse's going to be filling his hand here with Lily, drawing up to eight cards. So pretty explosive turn from Jesse. We've also seen Silvalli GX played quite a bit recently. Silvalli GX, a card that originally released in, what is that, Crimson Invasion not the most uh, tournament-ready card ever made, but has found its way into competitive decks now because of its ability to type change with or Thank you so much, Nintendo Geek. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie. Appreciate it, Nintendo Geek, for the support there. Um, but yes... So Valley GX finding use with those various memories, the disk drives that allow the Cell Valley to change types. So very cool there that those are finally seeing play. It seemed like forever that Cell Valley would not get to see the light of day, but especially with triple acceleration energy, really 
making Silvalley GX a valid option for a lot of decks because of the ability to charge up Turbo Drive and Rebel GX with just a single energy attachment. Now, we've got no Lapras in sight yet on Jesse's side of the field, but a very substantial turn one. I feel like he's got almost everything that he needs in order to get set up here. Sean starting off with an Electro Magnetic Radar and is going to be getting two Pokemon GX out of the deck. And it looks like he's headed for a Zero Aura as well as a Dedenne GX. Now, hopefully Sean knows what he's in for here. Sean is taking one for the team and uh, taking one for the team in air quotes. You know, you guys can't see that, but uh, there were only 11 players at tonight's league. So Sean decided to sub in and play as the 12th. So there didn't have to be a buy. Sean does not really do a lot of standard playing. He's borrowing Jesse's deck today, which I believe should be pretty much uh, Pika Pets, <laughs> which if you watch the channel, you're pretty familiar with. And it looks like uh, Sean is just going to ditch that hand with Day Day Change. Draw six cards here and looking for a way to attack. We see he burned that Electro, um, that Electro Charge. Uh, what is that thing called, man? It has been, um, <laughs> it has been, uh, a week. It's been five days, and I've already forgot what the electro power is called. Insane. Andrea getting rusty. Electro power. There we go. Oh, Excelison. That is very funny. The uh, Ursa ring there with the flex. Very nice. See Sean going for a Tapu Koko Prism Star. He's got the Tapu Koko Prism Star. He's got an energy switch in his hand. So if he's able to find a draw supporter here, he could potentially go for a big attack here early on if he just finds maybe the Thunder Mountain Prism Star. But he ends up just passing with the Pikachu and Zekrom. Two energy on it in the active position. That is tough. It's going to give Jesse chance to swing into that Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX. Very sad. Uh, I think I would have liked to see that Lightning Energy stay on the Zero Aura just in case Sean needs it as a backup later on. But we've got all energy full steam ahead on the Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team in the active position. And Jesse does find a Silvalli GX. So because of that gyro unit ability, Jesse is going to be able to pivot into Volcanian Prism Star here. And we see Sean checking out that Volcanian Prism Star, make sure it doesn't do anything that he's not aware of. And I'm guessing that it's just going to end up hitting that Pikachu and Zekrom for 100 damage. Sean will get the turn to full blitz if he's got an energy in hand but he's only got a two card hand and I don't think that either of them are supporter cards we saw Sean go for the dead a change it didn't hit a supporter off of the dead a change so now is just sitting there waiting for a play we'll see what Jesse opts to do here I don't think that Jesse I guess I spoke too soon. I was going to say, I don't think that Jesse plays uh, triple acceleration energy, but he definitely does. And he's got a triple acceleration energy in his hand right now, which he could, if he has a fighting memory, attack with the Silvalli GX. We see him kind of considering his route here, though, promoting the Volcanium Prism Star and Sauna Blasting, hitting for 100 damage, 20 damage snipe to the Dedenne and the Zero Aura. Now, Sean desperately needs to power up a different attacker here with Full Blitz. He will take a prize, but the ball will be in Jesse's court. And we see Sean has got a max, a Rescue Stretcher. It's, it looks like a Max Potion. I was going to say, ooh, a Rescue Stretcher for Tapu Lele. That's a great top deck here for Sean. Is going to 
give him the option to draw some cards. And it looks like he's just going straight for Guzma. A very aggressive play here. He's got the choice ban on the Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX. He can take a GX knockout on the Tapu Lele if he wants it. If he's got an Electro Power, or he could just Tag Bolt this thing if he wants to. I'm wondering if he's got an Electro Power in his hand. He's got the energy and an E-Power, so he's going to be full blitzing for 210 damage here and accelerating to, I hope, the Zera Aura. Please don't put them all on the Pikachu and Zekrom. All right, we've got the Zera Aura going in. That is pretty much an ideal swing there for Sean, leaving Je Jesse with almost no way to respond to this Pikachu and Zekrom with a one-hit knockout. He's got Persian. I mean, Persian GX could theoretically hit that KO number, but we'd have to see a Slashback GX. Jesse promoting the Volcanion Prism Star. We might not see that, but we do have Slashback GX as an option for Jesse this turn to knock out the Pikachu and Zekrom, but de definitely doing some damage there with the Guzma play on Sean's side. He's going to take a two-card hand. He still has not played a significant draw supporter this game. He used Day Day Change turn one and Guzma on turn two. And that is that is it, right? But Sean's got a very good board position, all things considered. Jesse does lose the free retreat as well on the Volcanium Prism Star, which is a big deal because being able to pivot to a different attacker here for free without having to pay retreat would be absolutely huge. And thank you so much, Oxella Sun, for those 300 bits. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If Jesse does want to retreat the Volcanium Prism Star this turn. He's going to have to pay a hefty retreat cost of three. Jesse does have <clears throat> the Ditto Prism Star down now, so <clears throat> he's going to be able to evolve that into uh, whatever he wants this next turn. He could evolve it into another Silvalli GX if he wants to. He could evolve it into another Persian GX potentially but this water toolbox deck definitely interesting to see in action and it looks like Jesse just going for another hit here with the sauna blast these bench Pokemon taking a little bit of snipe damage Thank you so much, Guitar Brandon, for the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome aboard, Tricky Jim. Sean is going to have a three-card hand now um, and is going to have to take a look here. So he's got three cards to work with, two off the prizes previously, played his entire hand down in order to score that knockout on the GX previously, and he's got another Guzma. Unbelievable. He's going to be able to go in with his Zera Aura hitting a perfect 160 damage and another Day Day Change discarding Ultra Ball and drawing his hand to six. Incredible plays here from Sean drawing into exactly what he needs. Now, Jesse is just one Guzma away from losing this game <clears throat> because of the Tapu Lele GX on his bench. Even if he decides to go completely non-GX strategy from here on out, that Zera Aura is threatening a one-hit KO on the Tapu Lele GX. The um, Picaram is threatening a one-hit KO on the Tapu Lele GX. And Sean has got a Thunder Mountain Prism Star to boot making his attacks even less costly here. So some great 
plays here from Sean. All he needs to do is find his final Guzma, taking two prizes. Very aggressive draws from Sean here, showing the raw strength of this Pikaram deck. And Sean cleaning up the damage on his Pikachu Zekrom. So you can see that there's exactly 200 damage on the Pikaram. Jesse is going to promote the Mew. An interesting route. The Picarom has 200 damage on it, so Mew's attack only places three damage counters. Not actually going to be enough to KO the Picarom, but Jesse could set up a cute play where he places two damage counters on the Picarom and then cleans up with a Sauna Blast, taking a potential five prize turn. I don't think that he's going to be able to score a six prize turn here though, unless he can find a choice band. So I guess if he, no, because even if he hits, thank you so much Wit for the sub on board for three months, appreciate the support. I don't think that there's any way that Jesse can score a six prize turn. He has not taken a single prize yet. He's just hit into this Pikachu and Zekrom twice with the Volcanion Prism Star. And you can see him mulling through his decisions here. He's got the Silvalli GX. He's got the Fighting Memory. He's got Lapras finally in play. But it feels too little too late. Sean got turn two and turn three GX knockouts while Jesse had to hit into that Pikachu and Zekrom twice without taking a prize yet. We see Jesse using his supporter for turn. It's just a Professor Kakui. He can retreat and take the knockout, but that's going to be game because Sean has got Tag Bolt on the Silvalli GX with his Pikachu and Zekrom. And that's it. Sean Lydon moving on to 1-0 at the Full Grip Games League Tournament in an exciting first round. All right, Sean Lydon here, hot off his round one win. That's a nice haircut you got, Sean. Ah, thank you, yeah. Yeah, that so uh, decided win. to kind of hop in for the tournament. Someone just gave me a deck, and they're like, you have to play, and I'm like, I can sure. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And standard, I mean, can you uh, maybe tell the chat how much time you spend playing standard tournament, the, uh, standard format these days? Very little. I was actually, <laughs> the whole time I was waiting, I was just hoping to top deck a verse secret at some point. Um, <laughs> there are no verse secrets. A lot of better cards, just hoping to get to. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I went to that, and then I figured the best way to draw cards in this game is prize cards, so I went to a zero card hand, got rid of his GX, and... Yeah, yeah. You're like, hey, you know, I mean, yes, you're not playing a draw supporter, but you're taking two prizes and a top deck. Better. It's basically a, a how. Yeah. You know, it's basically a Sharon. Draw three. <laughs> Plus, I had no idea what his deck was. He told me it's Lazy River, and he started with Meow. And I was like, like this what is that? Going to be horrible. <laughs> uh, and I saw this valley, and I'm like, I know what's up. I used to go. <laughs> yes. Okay, so your knowledge of the card pool is deep enough that you see the Valley, and you're like, yes. that thing can turn fighting. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, yeah, he's going to... And then I didn't know about the triple energy acceleration. That was not, that was lost to me. Right. And then when uh, that was revealed, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> that could have happened real quick. Right. Because <laughs> he plays water energy. So I didn't even know. I'm not familiar with the Lazy River deck. So I was like, yeah, I yeah. don't think there's triples in there. And sure enough, there were. I was waiting to punish him on uh, the weakness to lightning the Volcano has. Right. So, yeah. so. Never came up. Yeah, I wasn't, didn't need the odd prize card. Dude, just turn two, turn three, turn four, GX knockouts. Picarom's easy. You just, yeah. I mean, you just get in there and you don't really have to know anything about the card pool. You just know how to you know, yep. attack and then line up surprises. Just so. bully your opponent around. So awesome stuff, Sean. Well, good luck in so round two. Going, and yeah. uh, thanks for playing tonight. What is this? I don't want a hot dog, Sean. Oh, you always are making hot dogs. And Sean, to... Sean brings me this on stream. Tell like them a little how snack. you eat a hot dog, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Listen. Oh, apparently, are they grilling right now? Yeah, they grilled. Yeah, so it's oh, not microwave. So I figured you want to do a microwave microwaves. version. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. I would, well, I would love that maybe after I'm done streaming. I'm not, it's rude to eat in front of others. Gearing up for round two of the Full Grip Games League Tournament, we've got Holden Sheiks on the left versus Josh Vardos on the right. Josh is going to be playing Lost March for us again, his favorite deck. Josh, there's... Not been to league in a few weeks and is excited to give his Lost March deck a spin here. 
in the Unbroken Bonds meta. It looks like Holden has got what appears to be a Malamar deck for us tonight. So I'd be interested to see who Holden has decided to pair Malamar with. Holden is usually good for a pretty spicy deck, likes to brew up his own combinations, a lot of stuff that we don't get to see every day, so should be interesting to see what he has come up with for Malamar. Maybe we've got some Gengar Mimikyu action going on in the Malamar deck, maybe a Toolbox deck, or maybe just a Malamar Shrine deck featuring Shrine of Punishment, maybe some Giratinas. That would be pretty neat for sure. Either way, I have definitely got uh, my eyes on Holden here to win this match. I think that he is favored in this matchup here, especially with the Giratina being able to snipe the low hit point loss marchers. And then if Holden is playing Ultra Necrozma, that could prove to be very problematic for Josh, as we all know, that Sky Scorching Light GX could be pretty devastating. So we see a Beast Energy in Holden's hand that definitely keys in the fact that he is playing the Ultra Necrozma version of Malamar here. So Holden has got to be licking his lips, thinking about, oh yeah, Lost March, let's go. Sky Scorching Light GX, Giratina. We already see the Giratina in his hand. Distortion Door in combination with Sky Scorching Light is going to be able to take out every threat on Josh's side of the field in one fell swoop. So Josh looking through his deck with a netball here, grabbing a hop it is trying to figure out his route forward, and it's not an easy task. This is definitely one of the worst matchups for Lost March imaginable, and Holden is not doing Josh any favors starting the Jirachi there right off rip. It's going to mean that Holden's probably going to have a pretty consistent turn one here as well. So even Let Loose Dreams not really going to do a lot of damage slowing down this Malamar deck, especially with Jirachi already in the active. We do see Josh eyeing up an Ultra Ball though, and considering getting probably another hop up, you really want to get at least two or three of those down on the first turn of the game. He's gonna Ultra Ball away what appears to be a Marshadow and a Jump Bluff to Presumably grab another hop up, I would think. And he does throw that hop up to the front of his deck, revealing that that's probably the target that he's looking for, and benches it. So we've got two hop ups down. I do see that he does have one skip bloom in his hand as well. So he'll be able to guaranteed get at least one skip bloom into play on the second turn of the game we see a switch giratina in holden's hand josh actually has another netball as well but he could be saving that for a grass energy to get a turn two attack but we see the viridian in holden's hand he's definitely going to be using that viridian to get energy out of his deck we see him throw that viridian forest into play there He's got the Mysterious Treasure, perfect for discarding the Giratina. Throwing that Giratina into the discard pile so that he can use that Distortion Door ability to place damage counters onto Josh's side of the field. We see him using Viridian smartly there, getting the Psychic Energy out of the deck. And also pitching the Giratina to the discard pile with the Viridian Force. He's got Nest Ball as well. So a very powerful start here from Holden, grabbing another Inkay out of the deck, and then he does still have Mysterious Treasure. 
can discard the psychic energy and can grab himself either a Let Loose Marshadow or actually Tapu Lele GX to get Lily. Really like this play here from Holden, getting multiple psychic energy or just getting the one psychic energy into the discard pile. Giratina into the discard pile as well. A big Lily hand here. He doesn't want to play the Beast Energy yet. The Beast Energy would be best suited to go on to um, an Ultra Necrozma. But actually, we see him going in with the Giratina. I don't mind this play either. I think this is fine. The attack on Giratina does take two Psychic and a Colorless. So Holden is just saying, you know what? I don't really care that I am wasting my Distortion Door Snipes. I don't really care that I'm wasting my beach energy, my Beast Energy, because he's going to be trading pretty quickly with these Lost Marchers. And then once the game does narrow down to just a few prizes remaining, he's going to be able to pop that Giratina back out the discard pile, Distortion Door, and Sky Scorching Light for multiple prizes. The Viridian Forest will probably stick for the majority of the game. So he's going to have the ability to find those precious metal energies when the time comes to use Sky Scorching Light on the Ultra Necrozma GX. Holden gets two escape boards off of the Adventure Bag, giving his Jirachi free retreat. Now he's not going to be able to power up an attacker very efficiently here. And, uh, Holden also decides to put a, a skateboard on the Tapu Lele GX as well, kind of just thinning his deck, knowing that Josh does play Let Loose Marshadow, and Let Loose Marshadow is always a threat to shuffle the hand back into the deck and draw four more cards. Holden is just going to opt to retreat and do Tapu Lele here. Interesting strategy saying, you know what, I don't actually think that Josh can get enough Lost Marchers into the Lost Zone this turn in order to knock out the Tapu Lele. Holden would rather save his Jirachi safely on the bench for next turn. We do see that Josh does get two Skip Looms. He's going to be able to Floral Path into the sky, both of them, in order to spring two Jump Luffs onto the board and they also are going to shed their damage counters when they find those jump luffs so josh is rocking four pokemon in the lost zone at this point but that is a long ways away from the nine needed to get a one hit ko on this tapu lele gx josh would have to find multiple lost blunders and then also a ton of Pokemon to pitch away with the Lost Blenders. It's almost not possible. It is, though. We do have, of course, the Trumbeak as well as an option. I mean, Josh could draw into four Trumbeaks here and a Let Loose. Uh, that is theoretically possible. I doubt it's going to happen, but we could see it. And we do see, I believe, a Let Loose Marshadow in Josh's hand here. So... He is going to be able to reset this hand to four if he wants. He's also got Viridian as an option to find a grass, but I do see a grass energy in his hand as well. So he's got the guaranteed attack into the Tapu Lele GX, but I think this was definitely a heads up play by Holden saying, you know what? I know the limits of this Lost March deck on turn two, and it can be very difficult for Lost March to ramp to 180 damage, especially when there are only two hop ips in play on the first turn of the game. And when this Tapu Lele GX soaks a hit from Lost March, Josh will have to bring that back up with Guzma later in the game in order to redeem those prizes that he started working on here on the second turn of the game. So not something he wants to do. Josh would much rather just hit into the Jirachi for knockout. You know, would rather knock out an Inkay for knockout. Anything other than this. So 
real heads up play from Holden and giving himself a great opportunity to get a turn two attack with Giratina. If Holden is able to take the first knockout in this matchup as well uh, as having the option to Sky Scorching Light later in the game, I have to say Holden definitely feels favored. Josh does find a netball and Trumbeak here, so he's going to take a look at the top card of Holden's deck. Not a supporter. We don't get to see it pitched to the loss zone. I think I just want to see Josh get another hop up out of the discard pile. I or not out of the discard out of the deck and set up more attackers here. Uh, but he just passes, and I think that's probably fair. I think I mean at the very least, you probably want a Nuzzly Gathering and at least get another uh, a Molga out of the deck, thin the deck as much as possible. But just a pass, and that feels really bad. Not even deciding to hit into the Tapu Lele GX. Josh deciding that he'd rather save his precious jump bluffs here for a bigger, more meaningful target. Holden does have a fully powered Giratina here, and it's going to use Viridian Forest to discard the Mew in his hand. And he's going to find a Psychic Energy out of the deck with Viridian Forest. And looks like Holden is going to be going in for an attack here with the Giratina. Shadow Impact for Knockout on the Amolga. Josh promoting a free retreating uh, jump bluff here. And it's going to be left trying to find a way to knock out this Giratina. Does have a pretty stable board position, but only five Pokemon in the loss zone. And... That means that he can deal 100 damage with that Lost March attack. Not enough to knock out Giratina. He's going to need a couple more Pokemon in the Lost Zone. We see him going for an Ultra Ball here. If he's got a Ranguru, maybe he could Instruct. Could also go for a second Let Loose. I mean, both of them feel kind of bad. I think I see a Feromosa and Buzzwool GX in Josh's deck. Is that what I see? I think I do. All right, so Josh does have some spice here, it appears. Is that a Pheromosa and Buzzwell? I'm pretty sure I saw one. Looks like he's just going to be grabbing a Natu. That can't be good. Oh, and then has Cynthia. Okay, that's fine. But curious as to why Josh is not setting up more jump bluffs in this situation. Cynthia here and... Josh also not committing the grass energy to any of these jump bluffs. He's had that Viridian Forest out for multiple turns, but has not used its effect to find the grass energy. Now, Josh does draw into a hand full of Pokemon and a Lost Blender, so he's going to get that much-needed Pokemon in Lost Zone. And he's got a DCE off the one card. So he can attack with the Natu to take a knockout on Giratina. So Josh getting just barely everything he needs here. The Viridian staying in play means that he will get two more turns of attacking. But with Holden's board having everything he needs to stream attacks the giratina a built-in consistent non-gx attacker here working phenomenally using that distortion door ability to come back turn after turn it's going to be absolutely devastating for josh to have to overcome in this game holden gets the mysterious treasure off the top deck as well evolving into his second malamar which means that his board position is definitely shored up here Double Psychic Recharge and Manual Attachment from Hand means that the Giratina and Shadow Impact are going to be coming back turn after turn. 
I don't suggest that Holden deals that 40 damage to the Jirachi again, but I doubt that that's what we're going to be seeing here from Holden. The Jirachi really just taking that 40 damage because it didn't really feel good to place anywhere else. I highly expect to see Holden place the 40 damage from Shadow Impact maybe on the Giratina itself this turn since Josh now has overcome the benchmark that he needed to hit of Pokemon in the Lost Zone so that he can one-hit KO the Giratina with the 130 hit points. So definitely expect to see that. We'd also see the Ultra Necrozma in Holden's hand. So he has that as a future play. And with a backup Inke on the bench, two Malamars in play. He's got all the pieces that he needs in order to pull off that game-winning Sky Scorching Light GX. And Giratina just coming to the forefront here. Going to take that knockout and Holden will go to four prizes remaining, placing the 40 damage on maybe Inke, it looks like, wanting to preserve the health of all of his other Pokemon. Seems fine. Josh got another Ultra Ball, and it looks like he could get... I don't see a second let loose. Oh, there is an Oranguru though, so that Instruct is going to come in clutch here for Josh to be able to draw more cards. Still has not committed to using that Viridian Forest yet, so I hope he hasn't forgotten about the fact that he can use the Viridian Forest. And I see him kind of looking at this hand unenthusiastically. Josh, please remember to use Viridian. Oh no, Josh did not remember to use the Viridian Forest in his passing here. I have not seen Josh use the Viridian Forest yet, so I have to think that he does not know about it or has not remembered. So it might be at some point Josh during this turn remembers that he could use Viridian to find the grass energy for his jump bluff. Holden has got to be just chilling looking at that. Like, okay, yup opponent not using my Viridian. I'm into it. Seems pretty good. It's going to evolve up into another Malamar here, and it's tough for Josh. Hasn't been to league in a couple weeks, looking a little rusty, but that's okay. It's okay, Josh. I can give you a hard time because uh, I'll see you after the game here, <laughs> but uh, Holden going to go in and shuffle draw six with that Cynthia. And Josh offering up the Oranguru, potentially going to take the legs out from underneath his deck. He doesn't really have any other way to draw cards once this Oranguru gets taken out. So we might just see a quick concession here, especially with Holden's board looking absolutely stunning here. Very well established. He's got metal energies in his hand all ready to go with the Ultra Necrozma. I think I see a Mysterious Treasure as well. He can go search out the Ultra Necrozma when the time comes, and he's just going to deal another 40 damage to his own Malamar. And let's see if Josh decides to go with the Viridian play and take a knockout, or if he's just going to maybe Guzma up something on Holden's bench and hope that he can stall a little bit longer. But at this point, a Lost March deck does not want to be in a situation where it's stalling for turns. That is surely going to spell disaster for Josh, and I, I just don't think that he's seeing the Viridian play. Oh, here he goes, he does see it. Okay, he's got it. So he's like, all right, let's get this Marshadow out of here. Very well done, Josh. Here we go, getting the grass energy. And he is back in business. So he can actually attack now. Guzma up in Malamar and take it out with Jump Bluff's Lost March, putting him uh, at four prizes remaining. Good stuff. Holden here just really biding his time, saying, hey, can you just take one more prize so that I can win the game with my Ultra Necrozma GX and We'll see if Josh lets the game go out that far. I know I would hate to see it back when I would play Lost March on 
PTC Geo a lot of times. I knew I knew it was coming. I knew the Sky Scorching Light was was coming. And when my opponent got all the cards they needed, I'm like, all right, dude, I'm scooping it up. I don't want to see my whole board of Lost Marchers just get taken out by a single Sky Scorching Light GX. And the saddest thing about it is that the new Mew from Unbroken Bonds doesn't even stop Sky Scorching Light because Sky Scorching Light puts six damage counters on each opponent's Pokemon, doesn't deal damage. Damage dealt to bench Pokemon is prevented by the new Mew, which is a great option for decks to prevent things like Tag Bolt GX from taking multiple prizes or even Weezing, Splattering Sludge. However, Sky Scorching Light GX evades all of that all that nonsense with its placing of the damage counters. We've got uh, Holden here really preparing his board, doing everything he needs to do for what should be the final turn of the game. Josh does have a uh, Feramosa and Buzzwool Tag Team GX in the deck. That is something that can certainly survive Sky Scorching Light, but at this point there are already enough Pokemon on Josh's side of the field that have less than 70 hit points that uh, Holden will be able to take his final three prizes here with the Ultra Necrozma after he takes his third to last prize this turn with Giratina. So really just preparing his hand, preparing his board, making sure that all his ducks in a row, everything's ready to roll. Metal Energy's in hand. Mysterious Treasure's in hand. They might have played the Mysterious Treasure in order to get that second Giratina, but at this point, he doesn't need the Sky Scorching Light GX. It would just be kind of an added flex. And we see Josh just flicking the die away in disappointment, saying, you know, I already know. I know what it is. The game is lost. Oh, Lost March, why do you do me like this? Why do you make me feel so bad? Josh checking his discard pile, making sure that there is nothing that he's missed. He's got a rescue stretcher, but I don't know that there's too many Pokemon in his discard pile that could help him out at this point. He could get the Instruct Orangaroo. That does seem like probably the best bet for him to be able to draw some cards here. He does have the option to use Viridian again to get the Grass Energy for his Jump Bluff to take out the Giratina, but with four prizes remaining, we know that Holden's deck is just established in a way that there is no stopping it. Josh gets to instruct for one Pokemon Communications away a Jump Bluff. He's got a reset hole, Marshadow in the deck. He could get his Feramosa Buzzwall. I guess, but that doesn't really seem like it'll do enough. He could take one additional prize. I guess if, like, the real clutch play would be to Guzma up Malamar and hit Jirachi and Malamar for knockout with Jet Punch, I guess, or Beast Game GX. It's just... Uh, doesn't feel good and we see Josh kind of you know going through the motions here like sure all lost March go ahead give me your worst and Holden he's got the mysterious treasure he's going to get the dude he's like all right this is it two prizes remaining it is time for sky scorching light GX the moment we've all been waiting for. I've already got the metal. I've already got the psychic recharge. Let's go. And that is just how this matchup goes. The 10 damage has already been placed on the Jump Luff and the Mars Shadow. So Holden will be taking his final two prizes for a game here with Sky Scorching Light for game. And that is it. Holden Sheik's moving on to 2-0 at the Full Grip Games League Tournament with his Ultra Necrozma Malamar deck. Unfortunately, Josh's Lost March deck stalling out there mid-game and uh, not, uh, not getting him to where he needed to be to overcome that very difficult matchup.
Yeah, tough break for Josh. That is not a good matchup by any means. And then if you miss an attack in the middle of the game, things can get even more tough for sure. Ultra Necrozma Malamar, definitely an interesting choice in this current metagame. We think about the fact that Ultra Necrozma can definitely take out big tag team Pokemon GX in one hit. Ultra Necrozma fares pretty well against Zork also. So let's get Holden back here for a quick interview. See what he says about his deck. All right, Holden Sheik's here. Hot Excellent. off his round two win. How you doing, Holden? I'm um, doing good. Doing good. I... Uh... Had a buy because I came in like super late. I feel I feel oh, I feel pretty bad about that actually. But you won your game. You I won did win my two. game. So you're two zero, oh, but completely you're, deserved what? You're two zero. Oh. Yeah. Two zero. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you're two zero. Oh. So we had Sean Lydon actually hopped in because he thought we were only gonna have eleven players. So then you must have came in like, did you come in right after that or? I think no. I think uh. I came in, like, right as the tournament started. He was yeah, showing me the pairings on the... Yeah, that was how yeah. Matt Price showed me. Oh, okay. Oh, my God, I feel so bad for you. Oh, don't that. feel bad. No, well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. So, Ultra Necrozma, what inspired you to play Ultra Necrozma tonight? You know, in the middle of work before I came here, I was just like, why does no one play this deck? <laughs> right. Okay, my thought process was, okay, I need to beat Reshizar. That's the deck to beat. Right. It beats tag teams. For sure. Simple enough logic, right? Right. Okay, and then prize one attackers. Those are also debated in my existence. Right. Why am I not just, I'm just asking myself a bunch of questions I can't answer. Why would I not just throw a Giratina out there right. and just, you know, bump stuff? Just. It seemingly has all the answers to everything it needs right now. Right, so right. I'm playing this deck just to see, like, why it's not played, why it's not, like... It's probably inconsistency because if you don't run into a draw support, it is uncomfortable. But, it can be very bad, yeah. But I think... Um, you know, I just decided to add a little bit more to it. I added a ninth draw supporter. That's good. Um, there was the Marshadow Lele. There was actually one Rashi in it, but there's one what? There's one uh, Jirachi. In it. Oh, okay. And you started okay. it, <laughs> right? No, right. That was what? casual. Yeah, pretty um, much best starter in the in the deck for sure. But right, because you just devote a lot more bench space to the Malamar. So I, right, there was two in here right before I came here, but I was like, eh, no. I'm I not think like one is fair now for yeah. sure. So uh, I think that previously. In team up format, we saw the Malamar decks really struggle to keep up with Zapdos decks and how aggressive they were. But now Zapdos decks are struggling to keep up with the bigger oh, tag team that decks might be a... and also Stall. Stall is a really bad matchup for Zapdos, so Zapdos kind of got hated out by the Stall decks. <laughs> so it just became like these uh, basically tag team decks and like Stall were like really big. Uh -huh. uh, I guess Weezing can also be very bad for Malamar. Uh, well, potentially. honestly, my answer to that, I do play the I do play the Mew in here, right? And I play the uh, Stealthy Hood as well. Okay, I'm just like, so so it's pretty good. That, that that works, right? You attach Stealthy Hood, Weezing can't even touch it, right? Well, that that's a little yep. can't touch They'd it. They'd have to Guzma it up, right? Right, they have yeah. to Guzma it up. Right. The one the one copy of Guzma they probably play. Right. So that sounds like uh, you got it all kind of figured out. I think in the right meta game, Malamar could definitely uh, take down a tournament. Right, so. I, you know, I think so. I just think I need to make it more consistent. That's the thing. I agree, and that will definitely be the key here. So you're going to be heading to the North American International Championship. Yes, excellent. That's one of the stuff. few regionals I can like actually attend because it's Nats. close. That's my big <laughs> tournament. <laughs> big tournament. Big all I regional. Because <laughs> like it's in Columbus, it's two hours yeah. away. I did it last year actually. Awesome. Um, the only uh, the only other like national I was able or regional I guess big tournament. Yeah. I was able to attend was Roanoke, and those are my only two regionals. Well, good stuff, man. Well, tournament. I'll be rooting for you at the North American International Championship, so good luck in next round. Thank you. Yep. Players are getting set for the third round of the Full Group Games League Tournament. We've got Sean Lydon versus Holden Sheiks. Sean is going to be playing that Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX deck that we saw him piloting in the first round. Holden piloting the Malamar deck we saw and it looks like both players are 2-0 here. Sean has Tapu Koko GX as his starter. And Holden with Giratina. I do see a Dedene GX in Sean's opening hand. So he's going to be able to get a pretty explosive start here. Going first, definitely an advantage for Sean, though. Uh, if he does go first, Holden definitely wants to be first on the draw here in this matchup. Getting set up quickly is going to be of paramount importance for Holden 
as he tries to navigate this matchup. We did see that he is playing the Mew in his deck as well. So Tag Bolt GX is not going to be readily available for him. And I think that Jesse's version of the Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX deck is not running Jolteon. So Jolteon usually very powerful in this matchup. Not going to be a option for him because he does not run it. So Tag Bolt GX probably not going to be super effective either. We see Sean going straight for the Day Day Change, drawing six cards off the top of his deck, looking for a supporter. We saw in game one, Sean was not able to find a supporter card off of his Day Day Change, but it looks like he does find an Ultra Ball here, getting rid of that appears to be uh, Marshadow. So this is not Pika Pads. This is just uh, probably one of the Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX decks that has done well lately at one of the regional championships. I saw some players running the reset hole and uh, reset hole in their decks. So it's probably what we're seeing here. He's got Tapu Koko Prism Star, Lightning Energy on the Dedenne, and then it's just going to turn one, let loose. Both players to four. Still no supporter here from Sean. But if he can find a Lily to fill his hand off of this let loose to four, he's going to have a very explosive turn one for sure. We see the energy coming down onto the Dedenne GX for Sean. Thinking he probably doesn't uh, want to mainly power up his... Tapu Koko GX, but that Tapu Koko is going to need an energy eventually for Sean to be able to retreat it. I don't think that there are any copies of Switch in this deck. A Lily here for Sean would be huge. And we see Sean just opting for the tap. Well, Holden gives him a nice shuffle cut. Sean getting four. He's already exhausted two draw options, Dead Day Change and Let Loose. Can he find a draw supporter for turn? It looks like he's got Electromagnetic Radar and Energy Switch. That is not going to net Sean uh, any more draw this turn. But next turn, Sean should be able to get a pretty explosive turn with that Electromagnetic Radar. If there's a second Dedenne in this deck... Holden appears to have a pretty explosive turn one, though, with double nest ball in hand. And I think I also saw a let loose Marshadow to boot, so he's just going to be benching that, and both players will shuffle, draw four new cards. So Sean still not finding a turn one supporter with this deck. But he does have the Thunder Mountain Prism Star. Really hoping that that sticks for him. It's going to help him to find a turn to attack which would be very good for sure helping him to just establish his prize lead early in this matchup which should be pretty toe to toe the advantage will shift from sean's side to holden's as holden buys himself more turns to set up the malamar engine and load energies onto those ultra necrozma gx's that we know he plays in the deck. Holden definitely looking for a switch or a skateboard here so that he can get that Jirachi into the active position. And we see a switch and a Tapu Lele. So this is actually a really great draw here for Holden. If he finds a Lily, I expect him to just go in here. Oh, he's looking at the bottom five cards of his deck. So Holden actually made a little bit of an error there. Looked at the bottom five cards of his deck, did not reorder anything, so he's just going to look at the top five, and that's totally fine because he's about to shuffle those back in anyway. So it doesn't actually matter. He does find the Lily, though, so that's great. If he takes the Lily, he can Ultra Ball away the Lele and the Ultra Necrozma, which I would really like, and then just Lily for eight. Off the turn one, let loose. 
that could be really good. So I'm hoping that he takes the Lily and just ditches those other cards in his hand. He doesn't really need them. And just fills his hand to eight. He could take maybe the Escape Board, Mysterious Treasure. I mean, the Lele is a Lily, but I don't think he actually wants to put the Lele down. You don't want to bench the Lele because then you leave yourself in a position where, I mean, you could theoretically get tag bolted, right? So if you don't have bench space for Mew, I think t taking the Lily feels correct to me. He's got Rescue Stretcher in the deck. He can get those other two things back from the discard pile. And we see that he is mulling his decision over for sure. The Lily, I like this play a lot. So good call by Holden. Grabbing that. I go back into the deck with the Ultra Ball. Just ditch those other two cards for sure. Get yourself whatever else you want, be it the Mew, another Inke, what have you. I don't actually see the Mew in his deck after that first kind of scan through. And he opts to go for a Malamar, saying that, okay, I'll get my Malamar ready for the second turn and just Lily for seven. That's a big Lily still, drawing a substantial number of cards. And then Holden will be satisfied if he can just find a single energy to attach to probably Giratina there as he aims to get his board more established. So he's got the Viridian Counter Stadium. That's great to bump Sean's Thunder Mountain Prism Star as well. No energy yet, but he can trade one of those cards away with the Viridian Forest to get energy into his hand. None of them feel like great discards, though I think ditching one of the escape boards is correct here just because the choice band is good. The escape board for your Jirachi is good. Um, Guzma's good. Cynthia's good. Everything else just feels really strong. But I definitely want to see an energy come into play. So he's going to need to Viridian something away. And, you know, Holden does know how valuable those switch cards are. The Guzma, that's fine as well, to be honest. If he wants to hang on to both the skateboards, it's totally okay. You know, he doesn't know if Sean's playing Field Blower or anything like that. So definitely a valid discard there. There are more Guzmas in the deck, that's for sure. He'll throw the Psychic Energy onto Giratina, just get it suited up and ready to go, and just retreat into Marshadow here on the, on the first turn. And I think that that's a fine option, just giving him a chance to save the Jirachi for one more go. He said he only plays one Jirachi in the deck. And he kept that escape board in his hand, so if the Marsh Shadow by some miracle does not get knocked out here, he is going to be able to equip the Marsh Shadow with the escape board and continue from there. See, Sean does have Electromagnetic Radar, discarding Volkner and Ultra Ball. He's going to go get probably Dedenne GX and another... Pokemon out of the deck if, oh, Sean is taking a look at his deck. And maybe he prized his other Dedenne GX and is saying, you know what? Yep, ouch. I really wish that I had Ultra Balled there instead, potentially to go for a Tapu Lele GX, but he... You know, ironically discarded an Ultra Ball with the electro electromagnetic radar. And if that other Dedenne is prized, this is going to be really tough for him. That, or it's possible that the Dedenne is in his hand. Uh, looks like he does have the Dance of the Ancients, though. He's going to use that to power up probably Pikachu and Zekrom as well as the Zeraora. He needs a couple more pieces here in order to get this uh, party started. He's got a lightning energy he could equip to his active, but at this point his energy is just very weirdly spread out. And ooh, his final Pokemon is hand in hand is a Tapu Lele GX. So that's very good. Very good for Sean. And he's got a nice Lily for six here. He does need to find double energy switch in order to attack, though. Uh, which is no easy task for this deck. He's got no additional draw after this Lily for six. It's just a six card draw. No order pads in this list, no Jirachi in this list. So he's gonna be just looking for that two card hit here. Double energy switch 
for the attack, which is one of the reasons why I kind of wish that that turn one energy had gone on the Tapu Koko GX instead of the Bench to Dene GX. And he'd just be one energy switch away from attacking. But now he's got four energy in four different places. It feels bad. Uh, looks like he is retreating into Pikachu and Zekrom, though. And does have one energy switch. And the second, unbelievable, from Sean. He rips the double E-switch off of the Lily for six and is going to be using full blitz for 150 damage, knocking out the lowly Marshadow and accelerating three energy onto his benched Zero Aura GX. So very strong play there from Sean and drawing exactly what he needs, even though the odds... Uh, not super stacked in his favor there. Very nice rip. Holden is going to use Mysterious Treasure, discarding that second escape board now that he doesn't need it to get more good stuff out of his deck. He's got two Malamars now. You know he's got one in hand from the turn previous when he lilied, and he just grabbed another. He's got Choice Band, Cynthia, and Mysterious Treasure. The pressure is on for Holden now staring down a whole lot of aggression. He's going to go straight for that Mew, making sure that there is no Tag Bolt shenanigans about to happen. And a Cynthia, he's got what should be a guaranteed attack with the Giratina here, but I'm not sure if he actually has another... Psychic Energy in the discard pile, so it could have been good for him to... Uh, oh, actually, no, it's, it, he needs to hit one here, so he didn't want to use Viridian to get one in the discard pile. He did find one, though, so that's great, because he doesn't actually have one in the discard pile, so he needs to discard the Psychic Energy with the Viridian, and he sees that. So good heads-up play here from Holden. He needed to find a Psychic Energy off of the Cynthia in order to discard one with the Viridian Forest, so he made sure to wait for that. It actually increased his odds of finding the combo because if he discards a card and Mysterious Treasures away the Psychic Energy before his Cynthia, he then says, okay, I have to find a Psychic Energy in order to complete the combo, but uh, he's operating with one less Psychic Energy in deck, whereas this way... He's operating with one more Psychic Energy in deck, increasing his odds of finding the Psychic that he needs to discard and throw to the discard, yep, and Psychic Recharge back. So very, very good. And we see Holden showing off his, uh, his cards here that uh, he is looking through with his Stellar Wish. He's going to grab Cynthia there. And he should be able to attach Psychic Recharge and attack with the Giratina for a 130 damage Shadow Impact there. Uh, I would expect to see Sean maneuver the Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX to the bench and probably want to pivot to a different attacker at this point in the game because giving up three prizes with the Pikachu and Zekron Tag Team GX really costly. So that's probably going to be on the agenda there from Mr. Leiden. If he played a heal card in his list, that could also come in clutch, but I don't think that there are any heal cards in this version of the Pikaram deck. We see Holden going through the motions here, getting that energy charged up on the Distortion Door Giratina and retreating the Jirachi for free with a skateboard, dealing that 130 damage to the active Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX. Sean now at five prizes remaining, trying to figure out how to skip ahead in this matchup. Typically, Tag Bolt GX helps with that, but the Mew on Holden's bench preventing him from doing that completely. It's going to make this much more of an uphill battle than it would have been previously. And Holden deciding to put the four damage counters on his bench 
Jirachi. It's going to be Sean's turn. He could definitely just knock out the Giratina. That is an option for him. But with which attacker, in which way, how does Sean come out ahead here? He's got the stealthy hood that he's just going to just drop on the Marshadow because it's not good in this matchup and doesn't really need it. Uh, I guess putting it on the Marshadow um, does... I was going to say it might prevent Distortion Door, but uh, that's about it. And then um, he's got Lily. So he's going to be able to fill his hand here. I'm not sure if the if the hood actually stops Distortion Door. Is it only the active Pokemon that it stops? So I would have to actually look up. I have not read the Stealthy Hood card recently. Yes, so prevent all effects of your opponent's abilities done to that Pokemon uh, this card is attached to. Remove any such existing effects. So it would prevent Distortion Door. I thought if maybe it was uh, your opponent's active Pokemon's abilities, but no, it's all abilities. So it does stop there. And Sean is just going to take out the Giratina with the Picaram, saying, I have no fear to fully loaded... Pokemon GX on my bench. Four prizes remain, but all is well. Sean also fully loading that to Dene GX. <laughs> Who knows what Sean plans on doing with that to Dene GX, but it's here. That's all that matters. To Dene GX has got two energy on it, ready to roll. Holden's going to play Cynthia. Shuffle draw six. And doesn't really need anything, actually. With the two Malamar on the bench, he's got the free retreater squared away with the Jirachi. Should be able to just pop that Giratina back onto the bench and take out the Pikachu and Zekrom for a favorable trade. This is what Sean wanted to avoid, but you can see here the Giratina just trades very well with a lot of the tag team Pokemon GX offering up a two hit KO, which trades favorably with tag teams, which give up three prizes. So with two, uh, two hits resulting in a KO on a tag team, Sean's only gonna take two prizes in return, which is pretty devastating. Sean's got four prizes remaining. Holden's about to go down to three and only be promoting a non-GX to boot. Sean would be better off with a regular GX in the active this uh, this turn, which is something that I was a little worried about. I thought that maybe he could have afforded to attack with a regular GX this turn and say, you know what, I don't think that you're actually going to end up hitting this GX Pokemon for knockout in one hit. Uh, he could have forced out the Ultra Necrozma that way. And said, you know what, you're going to have to take out, you know, bring out an Ultra Necrozma to take a one-hit KO. It's unfortunate that Sean started the Tapu Koko GX because the Tapu Koko GX is actually a really good way to take the energy off of a damaged attacker in these non-GX matchups. So starting the Tapu Koko GX means the Arrow Trail is never going to come into play never going to be an option to kind of whisk that energy off of a damaged attacker. So we see Holden grabbing the Cynthia off of the Stellar Wish. And he's going to be looking to refill his hand with some new cards here. Momentarily, it looks like he's considering an Ultra Ball. But like I said, doesn't really need anything. Can just Get the Giratina from the discard pile into play. But it looks like he might want to discard the Giratina in his hand. He's going to throw the Psychic Energy as well. So long as there's another Psychic Energy in the deck, which we see that there is, he's going to be able to Viridian for that Psychic Energy. And we see Holden just grabbing the third Malamar, which is really strong. Being able to Psychic Recharge three times means that Ultra Necrozma 
is going to be able to take one hit KOs on Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX throughout the game with only the addition of Metal Energy from hand. So that's super good. We do see the Distortion Door Giratina coming down. Gonna snipe 10. Actually cannot put 10 damage on the Mars Shadow Holden. It cannot go there. It cannot go on the Mars Shadow. Yeah. So, yeah. It's cool. Because Holden, you know what I mean? The damage just gets prevented. He tried to put it on the Mars Shadow. And the hood prevents it. Natalie's on it. Thank you, Natalie. For catching that one. Queen Natalie, everybody. And then... Giratina. I'm going to smack that peek around for three prizes, and it goes down. I am definitely worried for Sean's board state here. This feels really bad. He's got the Zero Aura. Sure, he can force Holden to take two more GX knockouts, but Holden should have no problem doing that because of the three Malamars that he has in play. Typically, before Mew in team-up format, Picaram would just tag bolt two Malamars and say, all right, where's your Ultra Necrozma now? It's not an option because of that Mew balancing out tag bolt GX and uh, making, it, making it so that things are just much tougher for this very GX heavy deck against the GX slaying Ultra Necrozma deck. We see Sean realizing that his only route forward really is going to be to take out these uh, <laughs> take out these guys. He's actually going to Tingly return GX and promote a Marshadow. As cool as that play is from Sean, it doesn't actually help his board position. Very swaggy, though. I'll give you that, Sean. That was, that was fun. I did, I did like that. All right, but as swagged out as that play was with the tingly return, knocking out um, the Giratina. Was it tingly return? Did it knock out? No, knocking out a Malamar, right? With double electro power. It does not help with the prize exchange. Holden can just knock out this Marshadow and then go and Ultra Necrozma GX, knock out a GX for game. So I think Sean would have been potentially better off promoting a GX Pokemon here just because it forces Holden to bring out the Ultra Necrozma this turn, which would be very good, right? So... If Sean promotes a GX, he forces out Ultra Necrozma. Then Sean has an opportunity to knock out Ultra Necrozma for game. Uh, not for game, but maybe knock out Ultra Necrozma and then hope that Holden can't do it again. That's the only route that Sean has to win this game. But making it so that Holden does not have to bring out a GX Pokemon this turn is everything Holden wants. Holden wants to save the benching of the Ultra Necrozma GX for the final turn of the game where he goes bench, attach, double recharge, you know, Guzma Lele, GG's. So Holden has everything in his hand in order to pull that maneuver off. It should not be very difficult. He's just going to stay the course here, retreat, and take the KO that he wants on the active Marshadow. Sending that to Sean's discard pile, even though Sean was able to take a knockout and promote a non-GX, it didn't actually do the prize trade any favors here. Sean also does not have access to Let Loose, so he's not going to be able to... Whoa! Back-to-back -back Guzmas, though. Pretty good. Now, that's pretty good, I think. The only thing Sean needed in this hand was to not promote the Marshadow here. Because if he doesn't promote the Marshadow, 
Oh, he's got a second let loose as well. That's really strong. Okay, so Sean's not in that bad of a position. I'm just thinking if maybe he drew out the Ultra Necrozma, taking a knockout on Ultra Necrozma this turn would be really good, sending him down to just one prize remaining. Or taking a knockout on the Malamar with an Ultra Necrozma in play would allow him to then win the game with Guzma Ultra Necrozma for game. He's just in a weird spot with his prizes now. Even though this board position is really powerful, really good, He's just in a weird prize exchange now where he kind of gave Holden this free one prizer, bringing Holden down to just two prizes remaining, and Sean has a board full of two prizers. That one copy of Jirachi doing work for Holden as well. We see that he's got a very bad hand, actually. He's got a very bad hand, but... The Stellar Wish on Jirachi is going to allow him to look five cards deeper for a supporter card to play. And with only one Malamar to speak for, he's going to need to find a Guzma since Sean is going to take this knockout with Zeraora. Holden has Choice Band. He's going to be hitting. Oh my goodness, that's game! He's got 160 on the benched Coco GX and Guzma in hand. Didn't even need to Stellar Wish for it. Unbelievable. Holden taking that game. Going to be moving on to 3-0. The perfect draw off a let loose to close that game out. Hi again. <laughs> got Holden back. Pretty tight matchup there, Holden. Like, I think it was. How I, did you uh... feel about that going into it? You know, he played Pikram. I'm just like, okay, so as long as he gets the alternate, as long as I get the alternate Cosmo set up, I should be fine. Just put right. him up against the tag team. Not the case at all, actually. It's, right. Uh, <laughs> Didn't use it. I just it. was like, Giratina, Giratina. Oh, hey, two hit knock, knock out. Two hit knock, two hit knocks out off Pikram. Very but good. Past that point, it was a little bit tricky. Yeah, we saw that you did rip the perfect cards you needed for a game there oh off of Let Loose. I was like, okay, Very so good. he's going to Let Loose me? Fine. I need Guzma, and I need Choice Band. Right. What's up, Brian? Thank you for the sub. Appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, so you got everything you needed. Didn't even right, need to off Stellar of Wish for it. <laughs> I know. Didn't even need to Stellar Wish for it. You were saying that you were hoping to run into Tag Team Pokemon GX decks. You were confident in your deck's ability to take out those Tag Team Pokemon GX would you say that you're even more confident now then? I uh, believe so. Yeah. I I just don't see why Malamar fails now, except for itself. It's Greninja all over again. Well, no, maybe not Greninja <laughs> levels, but... Not Greninja levels? There are definitely evolved Pokemon. Uh, that need to to come be fair, play. I do have like 13 ounce to everything. <laughs> yes, game, so. yes, yes. And That's also insane. with Mysterious Treasure, Ultra Ball, there's a whole bunch of consistency yeah, options yeah, so. in the deck that you have available mm -hmm. to you. So you piloted the deck very well. Moving on to 3-0. Is there anything that you don't want to see here at the tournament or anything that you think that could stand in your way from winning this fourth one? Stall, but it plays Giraffe Rig. I think Giraffe Rig. If they just lost, play. so yeah, all that's your energy. All I'm just going to accept that because most <laughs> people play uh, Giraffe Rig. So what can you do? Well, um, I don't think. What does this deck auto lost? To? Like stall? No, because you have alternate Necrozma. And if they don't Giraffe can Rig, be I can tricky. Just... It can be tricky if they have okay. ways to heal their like. Because uh, if you if they have ways to heal their valve, but, but I guess you do have the the hood. So, yeah, I do like, have the hood. I guess they could fob the. the hood. What if I'm like, forced to discard know, it? If you're forced to discard it, there are some ways that it could get tricky. And then uh, Zapdos is not a good matchup for Malamar, traditionally. I Honestly, I kind of thought it was the opposite initially. Like I'm actually kind of curious because Giratina just kind of like slices through Zapdos. So, and they would have to spend like the double problem electric is, The problem is like Zapdos, it, they like they knock out the Malamars real early. Uh -huh. And then like Giratina has to put damage on things. And then if it puts damage on the Malamar, then you don't need an Electro Power to knock it out. Right. If it puts damage on itself, then it's very easy oh, for the okay. Zapdos to knock out. And so long as they manage their bench and don't allow you to win with Sky Scorching Light GX, then like it's usually pretty straightforward. Fair and enough. If play, I guess I'm underestimating If they it. play Jolteon GX, then a nasty Swift run can be really bad, too. Oh, yeah. If they so. play Jolteon, yeah. I've, I, I've yeah. played Zapdos, Drachi, uh, Jolteon, and a Poke Beach tournament before, yeah. and I've gotten top four. And 
Very I think good. I remember beating a Malamar list. Like For, that. It, like that's that's typically how it went. That's why Malamar got hated out of the format in the first place in team up format was because gotcha. of Zapdos. That was that was the big one. But, like but you Zapdos, said, it's, not, it's not there anymore. on the back there burners. Is, so definitely back looking like Malamar is poised to take a a little come up here heading into Nats format. So excellent stuff, Holden. Good luck in your final round. Thank you. Gearing up for the final round of the Full Grip Games League tournament, got Nick Hunter versus Jesse Parker. And they are going to be competing for a spot here in top four of the Full Grip Games League tournament. Thank you so much, Blizzy, for those 100 bits. We've got Jesse playing that spicy Lapras deck that we saw in the first round, hoping that it's going to be a little bit more successful for him this time around. Looks like Nick is going to be playing Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX, and that is just a opening hand full of energy there. So hopefully he has a way to play out of that in his opening hand. Sometimes things can get kind of clogged up there, but if he has just an Ultra Ball, is enough to be able to kind of fix that, make it a playable hand for sure. Nick does have some nice blue sleeves. I do like those. They look like potentially baby blue dragon shields. Very, very nice. Or is it sky blue? I don't actually know the colors. Looks like Nick tries to, they're trying to spin dice and they're like flicking them at each other. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So should be an interesting matchup for us here. Pikachu and Zekrom was able to defeat Jesse's deck on the uh, during round one. And Natalie is saying, apparently we have a spill emergency. These players have apparently spilled a beverage or something. All right, here we go. Looks like Nick is going to be on the draw here, starting with Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX to Jesse's Lapras. He's got a Zara Aura for the bench. Pikachu Zekrom in the active. And he's going to be looking to pair this hand down. I think I see a Lily there. Not exactly the best draw supporter when you've got a ton of Pokemon or energy in your opening hand. Because you can only play one energy per turn. Thank you so much, Michael P.A., for the sub. Thank you, Michael, for the support, the host, the sub. Awesome stuff, Michael. Thank you. And Nick is going to be scanning through his deck, just taking note of what's in his prizes, looking to see if some key cards are there. We've got the Tapu Coco Prism Star making its way onto the bench for sure. So, knowing that he's going to want to get that. Actually, it does look like he has a Cynthia in hand, so it's great. He doesn't actually have to worry about parrying his hand down. I did see the Lily in that opening hand at first and was worried that he might have to do a suboptimal turn one Lily play, but looks like he does have Cynthia. It's going to get a nice shuffle draw of six, throwing a bunch of those lightning energies that were in his hand back into the deck. Looking for, ideally, like an Ultra Ball, some lightning energies. That would be great, being able to let loose this Lapras deck turn one would be pretty good, though. Lapras does have Collect, which you can use to just draw three more cards. We do see the Ultra Ball and Lightning Energy Wish has come true, so that is pretty good. Nick could just go in with the Let Loose here. We see him eyeing up that Ultra Ball, discarding the Lightning Energy and potentially a Lily or the Cynthia. Looks like the Cynthia is going down, and he's just going to search that let loose out. Is going to be limiting Jesse to just four cards on the first turn of the game. Very powerful start here. Also, getting that lightning energy into the discard pile is going to be fantastic for Nick because he's going to be able to use that Tapu Koko Prism Star in order to Dance of the Ancients, put energy back into play from the discard pile there. So great stuff there from Nick on the first turn. Only dream would be to have one more energy in the discard pile. And what's up, Danny? Thank you for joining us here in the chat. What's up, my man? Danny Altavilla in the chat, everybody. Say hello. 
It looks like Nick is going to be, wow, actually getting a pretty dream hand here. Uh, I think uh, we've seen an Ultra Bowling here. He could just go for Dedene GX and Data Change, draw some more cards. Why not? Why not? Uh, see that he might actually have that prize, though. And he's going for potentially Zapdos. That or there is no Dedene GX in the deck which is a possibility as well. So we see him just going for the Zapdos. No Dedene GX. Either they're both prized or they are MIA. Jesse has got an acro bike though. So it looks like this deck plays a pretty explosive draw engine and should have no problem drawing out of this turn one let loose. We see Jesse going for Ultra Ball, discarding Kakui and Water Energy as well. Getting those into the discard pan, uh, into the discard pile. Oh, what's up? MIA for the win. We got MIA in the chat. Gosh, MIA. Love MIA the musician. Just saying. Good stuff. If you were MIA the musician, probably freak out about now, but it's cool. Welcome, anyways, MIA. Thank you for joining us. Got Jesse playing a Cynthia here. Gonna shuffle and draw six cards. Got fighting memory in his hand. Water energy, gonna be enough to call collect here on the first turn of the game. C-O-L-L-E-C-T, Lapras. It's kind of her main move. Turn one, big old collect for three. But Jesse's going to set up his board a little bit more. Got another nest ball and also the Silvalli on his bench. Definitely what he wants to see. I don't think he really needs to worry about going for that Mew yet. Honestly, I would get uh, just another Pokemon that evolves. Probably continue to set up this board position. I think Volcanium Prism Star is probably the ideal selection here for the deck. And then... Jesse is going to have the option to collect, so not a bad start for sure. Getting a water energy onto the the benched Volcanion also. And we see this is pretty much just a Silvalli toolbox deck that plays water attackers to hit help, I guess, to like help set up, help hit Reshiram Charizard for weakness. Other than that, pretty much just a Silvalli Persian deck. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy, right? It's a Silvalli Persian deck featuring Water Boys. Nick has got an energy here. He's just going to go in and attack with Zapdos. And that feels kind of lackluster, not going to lie. It's really not the explosive turn two you want from Nick. We saw him Ultra Ball into that deck, and there's no Dedene GX. It's either prized or he's not running one. And... I would like to hope that it's probably just prized, uh, but you never know. To Denny GX, not an option for Nick, so he is sitting here just dead drawing while Jesse able to take another turn here to continue setting up his board. If he can get that Silvalli into play, maybe with Silvalli memory, he's gonna be able to chew through Nick's board position here pretty quickly does have the Viridian in hand and is going to discard Nest Ball, searching his deck for a... actually playing the Nest Ball. I thought he was potentially Viridian away the Nest Ball. He's going to get that Mew, protect himself against Pikachu and Zekrom's Tag Bolt attack, and then he's going to use Viridian, discarding Guzma. A surprising discard there. Guzma seems really good to play around that Zapdos. But you never know. Maybe Jesse wants to just draw more cards with a draw supporter this turn. If he's got one in his hand. Uh, I do see Persian GX is an option. He's got that. I would probably expect to see him evolve the Meowth into Persian GX. It looks like he's just going to Jet Geyser. And I expect Nick to just throw up the Marsh Shadow, I think. I know his hand is dead and he like wants to promote a Pokemon with an energy so that he can have a chance at attacking next turn, but it feels really bad to promote 
anybody other than Marshadow, I will say. Um, looks like he is going to just full-on evolve here. He's got the fighting memory for his Cell Valley as well. But committing that water energy to the Volcanion means that he is not giving himself the option to knock out this Zara Aura GX with the Silvalli GX this turn. He's saying, you know what, I'm just going for an Aqua Patch. If I can hit an Aqua Patch, that'd be great. Doesn't hit the Aqua Patch. Looks like, oh, he did patch it. Okay, thank you, DJ. Uh, DG. I thought I just saw that attached from hand, but nope, he did patch. So he has an option to attack with the Volcanion. I was going to say, not giving himself the... Uh, potential option to hit with Sil Valley seems kind of rough, but it's going to call that C O L L E C T again. Collect for three, and the ball is back in Nick's court. Going to use that Viridian Forest to his advantage here to go get Lightning Energy out of the deck. He's got that Retreater active for free with Zero Aura, so that's great. And Nick is going to be taking a knockout here for two prizes, can just easily retreat into the Pikachu and Zekrom. Full Blitz accelerating, three energy into play. It looks like he will probably want to put those onto his Zara Aura GX. I imagine they're not going to be doing any good in the active. And we know that that final card in his hand, oh, well. Technically, Nick is not supposed to have looked at his prizes and then full blitz. So Jesse, I assume, is explaining that to him right now. But it looks like they're going to be good sports and just allow him to do that. So Nick uh, is a little bit of a newer player. And I've actually made this mistake before as well. You're not allowed to look at your prizes before you do the action of full blitz. That was probably just a mistake. And this is a casual league tournament. So looks like Jesse's being a good sport about it, but future reference, yes, you are not allowed to look at your prizes before you accelerate that energy with full blitz. So Nick is uh, gonna go through the motions there and get his energy. And shout out to Jesse for being an all around good guy, good sport. Thanks Jesse for allowing that play to continue there and keeping the game exciting. Looks like Jesse is going to acro bike here. Gets another acro bike for sure. Going to ship it again. Aqua Patch hitting the discard pile. Looks like he's found his Silvalli GX that he is going to be able to potentially power up. He's given that Mew free retreat with the Silvalli GX. And Nick is like, oh, yeah. Let me go ahead and give that Silvalli GX a read here. Not a terribly exciting card, but when paired with that fighting memory can be pretty devastating for a Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX deck. So let's see if we get to see that fighting memory come into play this turn. With the Silvalli, can Jesse find all the pieces he needs to take a knockout for three prizes this turn? Hasn't taken any... Uh, Hasn't taken any knockouts yet. This would be a huge turn for him. We see he's got a couple of triple acceleration energies in his hand. He actually is just going to be able to get everything he needs with the Persians catwalk. So no questions asked. This Pikachu Zekrom is going down. And we see that the deck is designed to do just this. Use Lapras to help set up, collect, collect, collect. And then as soon as the Lapras goes down, Persian GX can catwalk to find the cards that Sil Valley GX needs to take huge knockouts favorably. So that's really a pretty neat combo. Definitely, definitely a fun deck to see in action. Sil Valley GX taking a knockout on Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX with Turbo Drive, accelerating energy onto his bench, taking pointed knockouts for weakness with the help of fighting energy or fighting memory. Absolutely incredible combo there. Jesse pulling off the whole maneuver. Looks like Nick is going to be able to evolve into 
Jolteon GX, which we saw in his deck earlier, still supporter dry, not finding those valuable draw supporters that he desperately needs in order to get himself out of the situation. But also, Nick's whole deck is just weak to that Cell Valley GX with the fighting memory. So that thing is looking awfully scary right about now. And he's got to be wondering if he can take care of this Silvalli GX. He's going to need, oh, a Dede change. There it is. The Dedene GX was prized. And here he comes triumphantly back with Zerora GX in the active position. He needs some cards here to take a knockout with this Zerora, though. He needs two damage buffs in order to take it. And it looks like he's going to Field Blower, getting rid of the Viridian Forest. Escape Rope. And Jesse is going to feed. Or no, it's Guzma. Oh, he's just Guzma. All right, all right, I see. Nick Dedenad into Guzma. is going to Guzma, Volcanion, and Swift Run GX. So heads up play here from Nick. Just bringing up. The Volcanian taking that energy out from under Jesse. Swift Run GX make it so that Jesse has to find a way around Nick's Jolteon. But Jesse has got the Tapu Lele GX in hand. And we know from the turn previous where he revealed to us he does also have the Triple Acceleration energy in hand. That means that Silvalli GX Coming back with another fighting memory as well. Absolutely insane. And thank you so much, Tommy, for the Twitch Prime sub. Jesse has got another Guzma, another triple acceleration energy, another fighting memory. And it's going to be wiping out another Pokemon GX, accelerating that water energy from the discard pile, going to just one prize remaining. And it's up to Nick to try to figure out a way to take out this 210 hit point Cell Valley GX. We need way too many damage buffs in order to get through this Pokemon here. We see another day day change coming down into play. He's got, okay, he's got Choice Band and another Electro Power. That's pushing him to 200 damage. He does need one more Electro Power to seal the deal on this Silvalli GX. But even then, you got to wonder, does Jesse have another copy of... Does he have another copy of Fighting Memory? Does he have another copy of Triple Acceleration Energy in his hand? Right, And he's revealing how many of these he's played, making things very... Very suspenseful here. He's got Rescue Stretcher that he can play so that he can Lily for one more card. I think it's tough. I mean, you just bring back the Zara Aura. Give your guys free retreat. Sure, why not? Lily for four. He needs one more E-Power. And that's not it. He's got an Energy Switch and an Attachment. He's so close. But he's just 10 damage short of a knockout on this Zero Aura GX. If it was any other Pokemon getting powered up, he'd be there. But Jolteon GX is just 10 damage shy with Headbolt, and he has to hit. This is so tough to see. 200 damage, and Jesse just has triple acceleration energy in hand for game. That's it. And gets to knock out the Jolteon GX. That's it. His final fighting memory. It looks like it was prized. But Silvalli GX emerging victorious here. Fighting memory. What a wild ride that was. Nick hanging in there best he could. But Silvalli GX taking it in the end. Round four. The Fulgrip Games League Tournament. All right, Jesse Parker out off his round four win. How you doing, Jesse? Pretty good. What's up, chat? Sick, man. So, dude, Lapras Silvalli. Let's go. Is it Lazy real River. or is it a meme? 
lazy, what are your thoughts? Lazy River is a fun deck if you play against three things. If you play against Picaram, Reshizar, or Zorark, it, you, you can actually kind of consistently win games. Against anything we else, saw it feels kinda, terrible. Kinda, yeah, kind of. Kind of. Qualifier so, there because you lost a Picaram round one. Yeah, so <laughs> your own Picaram deck. That it's, you hit. Oh yeah, that's right. My own Picaram deck. Yeah, that deck's <laughs> really good. But uh-huh. uh, like. I'd say it's probably like 50-50 because like there's three fighting memories, so that's a lot of fighting. Yeah, memories. yeah. So like, um, it's really not that hard to just you know, just get a triple Carlos and a fighting memory, kill a peak Rom, and then you just have to take three more prizes. But I mean, sometimes you don't have it. Like I had a fighting memory, I had the combo, but it was too late against the first. Let loose can be tough. Yeah, for the deck, you know, if they do a well time let loose, sometimes yes. person GX's two cards isn't quite enough. Not enough. enough. Or they yeah. can just Guzma and kill it, or right. you just can't get enough bench sitters. So you got to get a lot of bench sitters. Because you have to keep finding the triple acceleration. Yeah, you have to. Too. You have to keep finding type nulls. You have to keep finding things. Cause so like if you can get like a ditto, a type null, and a meowth, that's like really good. Cause then it doesn't matter really what they Guzma. You have like a, an option, like you can right. put it to one one thing or the other, but it's really bad when you just get down like two guys because then they can just Guzman and kill a Sil Valley or Guzman and kill a Meowth, and then you're like, and then you just it's really hard to get your combo pieces because it's kind of like a combo deck, right? And like Mewtwo or Meowth kind of lets you get the uh, or Persian lets you get the like the Aqua Patches for Reshizard and the Fighting Memories for Picaram. So yeah, cool. it's a really fun deck though. I mean, it's a I don't know if you know this already, but it's Chip Ritchie's deck. Um, I didn't know whose it was. Yeah, yeah. I just know that people had played yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, la- <laughs> I know uh, Chip and I know Rahul played it. Yeah, right? Rahul, yeah. Lazy River. I love where the name they, of the deck. Where did it's they great. play it? Um, they played it. So, I don't know. Chip just made it. I don't know if... No, he actually played a League Cup. I think he won with oh, it. Oh, okay. And then okay. Rahul got second. I think he said he scooped scooped to the guy in the finals. Oh, uh, so okay. He, he got in the finals with it, so yeah. Uh, I don't okay. Know. It's kind of more of a fun deck. I mean, it's so it's trainer it's okay. chips deck. Yeah, it's trainer chips. Ah, yeah. trainer That's chips right. special. There you go. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a super fun deck to play. Uh, Lapras, you know, just getting his last uh, last tournament in before he hits the uh, crazy hits the binder, rotated binder. You know? binder yep, yeah. Yep. So I thought like uh, it was pretty neat to see. I mean, uh, is Lapras more or less? The, I mean, he hits Reshiram Charizard for weeks. Lapras is like just literally just for lap for Reshiram and Charizard. to set up. To yeah, collect, collect and set up Persian. Is yeah, it seems yeah, like no. it kind of does. Yeah, going second <laughs> and collecting turn one is actually really good uh, because 190 is just kind of like an awkward number for some decks to hit. Like, uh, you can just tank hits, and then that can be your first guy to die, and then you kill a, you know, a tag and, team. Then you Persian. And then you, Persian, yeah, and then you, you like, go, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's super fun deck. Yeah, lots of fun. For sure, man. Well, good stuff. Congrats on the win. Thanks. And uh, we'll be right back. That's it for today's stream. Holden ended up going 4-0, so he is the winner tonight with his Ultra Necrozma Malamar deck. But it was cool to see Jesse ended up going 3-1 with the Lazy River deck. Chip Ritchie's special, the Silvalli GX Lapras deck. Definitely some things to consider. I will build the Silvalli Lapras deck and play it on stream tomorrow morning. Definitely, I could also get some reps in with Ultra Necrozma if that's something you guys want to see, but I don't know. Maybe spare me. Don't request that one, but I'll play whatever you guys want me to play. We'll play whatever. I will play some Lazy River tomorrow morning, though, so make sure to tune in tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the morning stream. Should be a blast. we got morning streams coming up both tomorrow and Friday, so make sure to tune in for that, and then... I'm off. All right. So we've got dinner coming up tonight. I'm going to be eating some dinner and watching some America's Got Talent. So you all take it easy. Get a good night's sleep. And I'll be back here tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. for the morning stream. You all take it easy. Big shout out to the mods. Big shout out to everybody who donated bits. Big shout out to my mom. Love you, mom. Good night. (laughs) Good night. Take it easy. Peace.